Hello and welcome to So Rare Andrews here on the So Rare Data Show. I'm Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on So Rare, joined once again by Andy Black, ABlack86. And today we've got the Parrot Press here. What is up? What's going on, guys? I'm, you don't realize how happy I am to be on here right now. I've been watching you guys for about two years and I started making content just for our project, blah, blah, blah. And now look at me. I've made it. So, mum, still watching. <laughs> Here I am. She's definitely watching for sure. <laughs> yeah. We are equally excited. To be honest, the um, Andy was the one who told me about you and the content that you did. And it was a while ago. Um, and he was just like, hey, have you, have you watched this guy Parrot Press? And I was like, I have not. And he's like, you should watch. I watch all of his streams. And I was like, oh, all right. Watch one. I'm hooked. And then you did like the absolute worst possible thing and you got like a new job and oh. you like reduced the, I mean, what, what are you doing? How selfish can you be? Uh, to be fair, in my old job, I really did take the mick at the last two months. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was just, I was streaming when I was meant to be working and everything. But, um, but yeah, this one's, it's a little bit busier. So content's been a, a touch dry. I'm trying to, trying to keep up with it as much as I can, but, um, I'm watching a lot of me more than what I'm doing it because while I'm working, I'll have the, the earphones in or whatever, but there we go. Well, it's all appreciated. So thank you for all of that. We're, we're going to get into a lot. Thank you to everybody for coming. There were, the, the chat is hot. We were late. My bad. No, but my I appreciate. Bad. <laughs> I like Laird jumping on the grenade for this one. We know whose fault it was. <laughs> I'm taking it. I'm taking it. So thank you to everybody who, to, you, to be honest, my favorite part was seeing everyone in the chat just having a grand old time without us. Like, that's what this is all about. I loved mm. it. So, um, so yeah, thank you to everybody. Philly Dilly here. I, I can't go through all of them because it's literally like half an hour worth of comments. We said, thoughts and prayers to Parapress if he has any of t intent of keeping this show on the rails, to which Daniel Cooper quickly replies, I'm not sure this show has rails, which is <laughs> absolutely true. Um, so yeah, the I'm going to skip everyone else. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. We, we got stuff to talk about here. Um, I wanted to go back to a conversation that Parrot Press and I had the day before the announcement of the new gameplay, because he and I were talking about some cards that he was looking at, and I may have had an idea of what was coming slightly. And so he was like, what do you think about this card and this card? And I was like, you, you may want to wait. And he was like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm going to play cap 240 super rare and rare plus. And that's going to be my focus. And I'm like, let's just wait a little bit. How about we just wait? Um, so what happened next? Well, bomb went off really, didn't it? <laughs> bomb went off and um, everything that I was working towards just blown to smithereens, basically. <laughs> so that's always fun. Did you feel personally attacked by Nicola? Um, yes, <laughs> no, I, to be fair, you know, I've watched tons of your guys shows, um, and we kind of all knew that it was coming or you guys knew that it was coming. You done many kind of chats around it, shows around it as well. So I think we was all just trying to get on the bandwagon, especially on the threshold front for as long as possible. Um, and to get 0 0.07 or whatever it was working out as. Uh, to hitting that threshold for super rare was just too good to kind of turn down. So that's what focused me for probably about what, three months before obviously the announcement come out. And to be fair, I did hit a lot of thresholds. So the plan was working and then I just got punched in the face. <laughs> I feel like most people feel that way. I don't know if that's good or not, Andy. <laughs> like if we all collectively feel like we got punched in the face, is that good? I mean, they were different types of punches, right? Because everybody got got like hit in a different way. Mm -hmm. So you know, like there were some low blows. Like Parrot Press definitely took a low blow on this one. Like shot to the groin. Um, yeah. Nicholas Swift kick to the to the nuts. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
But like everybody else, you know, just a little jab here and there. If you're a whale, you know, like you can just like shed shed those punches off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of people got kicked in the nuts for sure. Um, I apologize while you were just speaking there, Parapress. My, I was going trying to go through the chat a little bit, and I came up to this one. Agent Cooper said, "Sad news: my obese parrot died today. Although, mind you, it's a huge weight off my shoulders." Which, like, <laughs> I'm still laughing about it. Oh, shit. Parrots live for like a hundred years or something, right? Like they say, never get one as a pet because they just live forever. Is that true? Facts. I mean, I'm huh. like the, the bird expert here, not <laughs> not parrot press. Not the one who actually calls himself a bird. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I know nothing about parrots, so I'm out. Nothing. We've just been I'm lied out. to this whole time. Yeah. What what does lie. it what does it mean? What does this all mean? Oh. That's my surname. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. You said that on Make It a Double Double. Speaking of which, Simo's here somewhere. What's up, Simo? Um, uh, I see in the background you have, uh, like, what is that, a bonsai? Is that a bonsai tree? Yeah. Do you, yeah, yeah. do you cut it and clip it yourself? Well, the first question is, it, do you think it's real or fake? Oh. <laughs> mm. I think I it's bring real. It closer, but you got the light cool. there. You've got lighting for it. For Yeah. It's it's real. What are you saying, lad? I I think it's real also. Nope. So I guess you don't nope. cut it. No, I don't. That'd be <laughs> weird if I did. But <laughs> this show is just filled with lies. My God. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I like this earlier. Trust hashtag. <laughs> trust the stream um and ben johnson with us being late there was a late march joke somewhere here for someone more intelligent than me that was a good one too um anyway pair press what do we do now like what do you do you obviously made some huge changes to your gallery you brought in the goat and like what's the plan now yeah um well it took uh, i think it took everybody like a, a, at least a few days maybe a week maybe even a few weeks for some to work out what to do um, and for me, I had the dilemma of either just going, you know, balls deep into into super air and just going for it or to cut my losses, try and get out of them at a big loss, to be honest. But the way that the prices were going with rare, if you was to actually compare the price of the super air to the rare at that time and stuff like that, it weren't actually too bad. So I sold for a loss, but I also bought when they were cheaper for the for the big rares. So I just had in my mindset um buy the best rares that i possibly can and and just go for it in in the rare competitions Here, and hopefully i can win some rewards here's the deal you did the right thing because now how many how many challenger lineups do you run like three or four or something yeah i, I could probably run five if i needed yeah. to and then you have how like at least one in season team yeah i can put one out yep and, and i think last time we talked it was like well if if you keep going with super rares you would have like one team and if yeah. your goalie got hurt you'd be yeah in pretty bad shape and it's not just like now five teams or one team yeah it's just uh, i suppose what got me is that you know playing so rare for what two years you, you first start in your commons you learn your trade and then you go into the limiteds and i bought some horrendous cards there but again you learn went into the rares and that was a big jump and then i was like right i think i'm ready to now go into super rares and you're kind of making that climb on that ladder. And then all of a sudden you feel as though you're actually backtracking by yeah. selling the super rares. But I'm probably more happy with my gallery now than I have been since I had Griezmann rare and that type of stuff, which was a very small gallery, but some of the best cards out there. Um, and then I went through this whole journey trying to beat game and beat the game, which worked. But again, I had to reevaluate exactly where I was and where I am now. So. Yeah. You have fun well, you cards. Were, you were the problem. You were too good at it. They were giving out too much money. Do you know what makes me a, a little bit sick? <laughs> Is that I had I had a good gallery with like three lineups out there. I won Drew Bellin Bellingham come second in All Star Rare Pro. I was coming like a few podiums as well in the America regions. And I feel as though from there I literally went backwards. Um rather than going forwards and utilizing Bellingham at the time or 
selling him. Uh, I think I sold him and bought in Carlos Hill and somebody else, which at that time was was probably a good move. But since then, then I sold Griezmann, then I sold the next one, then the next one. And I, what I was buying was actually poor quality. Um, but I was thinking of the game rather than them as players. Well, Does that it was, make sense? It was the incentives of the game. The game was incentivizing you to yeah. not have Jude Bellingham. It was incentivizing you to sell him and buy a threshold team or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so. That's exactly what it was. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm happy. I feel like I'm in a, a decent place. Um, it's taken a good few weeks to get there, um, definitely. But I, I feel I'm ready to play this transition period. Did you enjoy that process? Yeah. Um, I got to the point where, again, probably talking about that ladder, um, I got to rares where I was playing three, four lineups, good, good players. And then you want the next thing and the next thing. And that's when I made some probably poor, poor choice, choices. But then um, I'll just say that's feeling like a support group. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Let's hug it out, boys. Thank Let's hug it out. Come on. Bring yeah. it in. Thank you being here um <laughs> uh but yeah i don't even know where i was going with that but i'm happy <laughs> i can well, tell you just talking to gator guy just based on guys that you're buying like a bander yeah. and messy and th th like this has gator guys like fingerprints all over it <laughs> yeah I, I i did speak to him a little bit but i kind of throw a question out there to to you guys you know sometimes like what do you think about this player what do you think about them obviously been playing the game a long time you're american which helps i play predominantly mls so you'll probably have a little bit more information potentially than me and just ask ask the questions and yeah gate guy did say oh i like this guy i like this guy and i was like mm, let me take a closer look and then all of a sudden 20 minutes later i've just impulse bought. talk you know, about bought. that for a second you're you're playing mls and and yeah. you're overseas like like what time do these games even come on for you like 2 a.m yeah you watching them <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm crazy. No, I've, I've got young kids. Um, so I've got a, what, two and a half year old and seven months. So when I'm doing the feed and stuff through the night and I'm awake anyway, at random nights, it's the best time for me because I can just chuck it on my phone or go downstairs and, you know, put the stream on Apple TV or whatever and then just fly for it. I don't get time on the weekend before. I used to sometimes sit there on Saturdays and Sundays and watch Premier League game after Premier League game after Premier League game. And now I just I just ain't got time to do that. So the MLS is perfect, for, and it's more fun. Come on, it's a crazy league. I mean, it's at the top of my head when I'm randomly wake up at two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, <laughs> I wish I could watch Austin, Colorado, right now. Definitely. <laughs> You're, no, J League and K League would be your. You know, like you wake up at two in the morning. That's what's on here. It's, you know, yeah. Just throw like, on your. Oh, I, I need I need Nagoya. to watch San Fricci right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's um, no. Um, apparently, the bonsai in the background is helping the uh, whoops, helping the support group uh, mentality. Mm. Agent Cooper says that they blame Orange Fly. After that solar data episode, it inspired me to buy super rares and chase the threshold. And like Par Parapress, I now have about twelve very average super rares that nobody's interested in. Mm. Um, I don't think Bob deserves blame for that, but. Who am I to tell him? For Let's get him. Let's go after him. <laughs> Bob He's not here. I'm broke him. Bob now. Get him, guys. Kenny said, watching Montreal Charlotte at 3 a.m. is the so rare experience. Yeah. ZM um, Star, new cheat code, follow leagues around your children's sleep schedule. There we go. Yeah, and, and auctions as well. What I find, they're, they're kind of cheaper normally at them times because there's not many people, especially like UK-based. I know it's obviously a worldwide game, but... Um, they are definitely cheaper at like 4 a.m. UK time. The the early days of so rare. The golden days, man. <laughs> uh, it was really bad. It was like if if it was like you know like French time because like the majority of the players at the time were were French. So like if it was like noon in France, forget about it. Everything is going to be like 30 percent more. But all of us U.S. players, all right, it's 10 p.m. here. It's 4 a.m. in France. We can win an auction now. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I was going to say that was back when like auctions would go unbid on, but it's happening again. Yeah. 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 
Does that mean we're back in the golden days? Hmm. Hmm. I, don't I think know. no. ZM Star said Bob's problem was speaking with those sweaters on. He came off as a person person we should respect and listen to. That's hilarious. So good. <laughs> Don't listen to the guys in the t-shirts. Listen to the guy over there in the sweater. He'll he'll do it. Um anyway, so what are you doing this weekend? What's the plan for this weekend with all your cards? Um I'm 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 debating actually whether to play three challengers teams um i'm in the uh, division one division two and obviously division five or what it's going to be he's four um, for rare four and i don't know whether to put it, a team in there or whether to just go in all-star um and uh then I, I mean i might put one in there anyway just because i can like i've got tim melia or something that I'm, I'm, I'm actually trying to sell him but if i keep him i'll throw one in there to try and get promoted but i think that a lot of people are potentially going to put all of their lineups in these what are they called now regions competitions i don't know what they're called um so yeah i might chuck one in in all star uh, i'm not going to play cap anymore unless again i've just got some random people to throw in there i'm just going to put that to one side um but yeah i'm in a i'm in a fairly like i'm in a, i'm in a happy place <laughs> i'm in a good position this going into this good uh, weekend i think at the moment made some so good decisions you're not playing cap 240 at all no, no. Guy with some ambition. Look at this. Yeah. Go big or go home. <laughs> As I was about to say, I, I have all star cap 220, 240, 270. <laughs> That's what I have. <laughs> yeah, but you guys have bigger galleries, right? So you're finding probably places to play these these players. I've I've tried to keep it concise a little bit. Um yeah. So do you think, do you think it's gonna be easier? Like easier to play because of that? For you? For me, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And it's it's a bit, it's more fun as well because I'm looking at players that um, I would enjoy watching, you know, set piece takers, bombing forward fullbacks, that type of stuff, rather than these random players where I'm thinking, oh, just, just hit 50 points, just get a little bit of AA so I can get the cap. Although, you know, you do buzz for it because it's free money or whatever and you just got to beat the game. But now I'm looking for the decisives and the attempted assist and all of these like big kind of moments in a game, which is going to make it better to to watch. Andy, do your lineups yet? Uh, yeah, sort of. Like they're like half done, I guess. To to your point, Parrot. Like I love I love buying fullbacks now. Like I don't even want to buy a center back because it's no. just. When it comes like the fun factor, center back is not fun. Like, oh, he he got a point for for playing the ball across the half line. How exciting! <laughs> or he's whipping balls into the box. Like, yeah. give me the guy whipping whipping the ball into the box. Yeah, Tim Ream is rolling over in his grave right now. My God. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's still there's still a place for a guy like Tim Ream. You know, the the toe poke last man tackle, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know. There's something fun about watching a fullback play. Yeah, I think I, I was just looking at my gallery now, and I've got two centre backs in my in my from my defenders. Everyone else is a fullback. So it's which is Otamendi and Robin Proper. <clears throat> Everyone else are fullbacks. I like this question. What about the right centre back in a back three? That's okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Plenty to do. Um, Glenn said Tim Ream's a big SLSG guy. I don't know what that is. St. Louis Scott Gallagher. It's a big club out here in St. Louis. So it was Josh Sargent. It's like all the pro players that came out of this region went through that club. Excuse me. Josh Sargent, uh, do I remember this correct? I think it was this game week, like super high. Yeah, pick, pick score. score. He got hurt last game, though, and, and then he didn't travel with the U.S. men's national team. So, like, I haven't done my research uh, I own a Josh Sargent, but I, I'm not 100% sure if he's healthy or not. He's ahead of Harry Kane. Stars big with red, the star. Big red, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you guys? Are you guys set with bigger galleries? Is it more difficult? Have you had to fill um, spaces in there? or 
I had to buy players um, because I'm playing so many things. Like it, number of lineups uh, is only only uh, uh, like stopped by the number of goalkeepers I have. So it's like if if I wanted to do more lineups, I can just buy more goalkeepers, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's this is this is really hard right now because it's the first time going through it. I think next week will be easier. The week after will be easier. Once also too, once we kind of like shake out what the best places to play players are. Like right now we're all kind of flying blind and I see everybody speculate, oh well you should play division four limited, whatever. And and everybody's speculating, is it better to play a division four team here or try to run it in all star? And it's like you you can make try to make educated guesses at some of those things, but like my my strategy is to, is to just get those lineups in, and I might not be perfect for these first couple weeks, but then see what happens and see where the best spots are, and then you know change change tactically what I'm doing based on that information. Yeah, I think I I just tried to make like what my best lineup was in every competition, mm-hmm. and if I thought it was good enough, then it's like all right, I'll just. I'll start there and I'll just go down. Like I, I ended up buying a bunch of super rares like in the last week or two and, or, and trading out of some rares that I thought I could use. And the, so when I was going through my lineups, I was like, I know what my ideal lineup is like in contender super rare. And I can't play it this week because like one of my players is out. So it's like, all right, so now I have a division one entry, like, opportunity and contenders, but I don't have a great lineup. So I'm not entering that. And so it's like, all right, where can I play this? And it's like, oh, I do have a challengers guy. So like, literally I did all of my lineups yesterday and like, like it wasn't a joke before. I actually have all-star 240, 270, 220. I did a U23 lineup for the first time in two years. And I'm like almost avoiding the, the new regions from like a priority standpoint this week just based on like where my lineups are. But what I think is really interesting is how many people are trying to figure out what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Like entry, entry numbers, like, oh, there's a 9% chance here and a 7%. Obviously I'll go here and it's like, you don't know how good those lineups are. You don't. Yeah. Also that data too is like, you know, like I haven't put my lineups in so early yet and I'm sure and- 90% of people haven't either. So like you can go off that data if you want, but it's going to be vastly different tomorrow morning. Right. When you check it tomorrow before the deadline and you're like, oh, shit, I it's thought like, what everybody you, was playing whatever. What are you going to do? Are you going to change your priority in the last two hours before the deadline? Like, I hope not, because good luck. Yeah, we've all done it, though. Yeah, that's what yeah. I, I've done it yeah. like eight straight weeks. This is That's actually what I do. That's oh, my God. process. Yeah. The old, the old lineup, morning, man, I throw on Quinny and Harry and I'm like, all right, lineup drafts, delete. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tune into that week in and week out as well. Um, but it almost puts more questions in than confirmation, so to speak, because somebody will just go, oh, that person's doubtful, but you ch- you've done your research and they're not. But then all of a sudden you're scrambling around. And the amount of times that I've watched that show and I'm literally two minutes to the deadline and I'm trying to click confirm because I've changed something. Uh, it's a blessing, but a curse. <laughs> it's a- absolutely right. Yeah. Where do you, where do you guys stand on in season and classic? Like Laird, I, I know that you're a classic boy over there, and you're 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 like very anti in season. You never want to play it. You're, you're never I, you're you're like boycotting it for forever. I sold the uh, Jesus Ferreira new season like 20 minutes ago, and I was like, let's, let's see which classic boys we can get now. <laughs> Is your is your aim to then obviously win new season in classic and then eventually play new season or is it just no sell those sell puppies it. and just make the classic parts even better? I'm not here for no. cash. I'm here to burn it all to the ground. Come on. <laughs> what does that even mean? You're here to burn I don't know it all to the ground. It came out, I was like, I have no idea what it means. I mean, if you're taking all of Silver's money in the cash games, then you might be burning it to the ground. You're right. I, so you're keeping the platform alive. I'm doing my part. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm winning. I'm using my old cards to win new cards, to sell them on the secondary market. So Sora gets their 5%. And then I just do it over and over and over again. <laughs> new money comes in to buy my cards. Frankly, I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, what, are you, what the hell are you guys doing? 
<laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I agree with that. And that's exactly how I'm going to play it for the first couple of months. Now, I do have a couple of e season in seasons cards just because I picked them up at really good prices at that time, like Brooks Lennon in season rare. I picked up for something like 0 0.02. And he did go up to 0 0.08. People were buying him He's at. I was, like, I was thinking, oh, should I just should I just take it? But then I, in my in my mind, I was just thinking, well, if I take that, I'm going to buy back the old season one at that price. So I might as well just keep it because I think that he's going to have a great season. So just keep it, utilize it, see what I can win from it, really. Yeah. Are you going to play in season with it? Um, I'll probably play MLS Special Weekly with it until that's finished and then just see where I am with that. Do, gotcha. do you need a Brad Guzan by any chance? Do you know what? I've looked at Brad Guzan. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't I can't bring myself to do it. Surely he retires at the end of the season. I think if you buy his card, you consider it to be disposable. Yeah. <laughs> He's like toilet paper. It literally <laughs> turns to dust at the end of the season. Yeah. But but he would he fit him in the gallery because, three years. Yeah, because the the goalkeepers that I've got are literally ancient. Stefan Fryer, Steve <laughs> Clark, um Tim Melia, um Joe Willis. Yeah. The average age of your goalkeepers is like 36. <laughs> it's young in Argentina. Come on, guys. What are we talking about here? Yeah. Loads of utility left. Yeah. Speaking of goalies, Agent Cooper said, I've noticed a few of my offers on goalkeepers being canceled quite quickly as other managers buy them at floor price. It almost reminds me of the old days of SoRare. Black, are we out of the dip? Where no. are we on the dip meter? I don't think so. No, yeah, I don't think so either. Um... Toby said, it's kind of funny how many people, me included, opened the lineup builder at the start of the week and was like, oh, shit, I need so many more keepers. Keeper prices are surging. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Sorry. Um, Toby said, surely Guzan gets benched at some point in the next three months. I, don't they have like three straight clean sheets? Yeah, he's he's doing it. has been incredible. Things. Yeah. Even and lots of either. saves, too. Lots of saves. Yeah. Yeah. Chinese said these dips have become very predictable, though, haven't they? International breaks are the death of the market every time. It does feel that way, that every time everyone's like, oh, we're in a dip. And it's like, is it an international break? And they're like, yeah, but and it's like literally every. As much as we try to like plan for weeks or months ahead of time, like if there's no game that week, nobody wants your card. Yeah. Yeah. Our keepers, the stars. Mm. Maybe. How are you guys handling uh, Messi being out this week? Just I'm playing cap 220. <laughs> Actually, so I, I shared this with somebody yesterday. In cap 220 rare, there are, it's like 600 rewards or something like that. What percentage do you think are tier fours and tier fives? Oh, like 90%. Yeah, I would say 75, 80. Andy, you're short. 93% are yeah. tier fours and of 600 <laughs> rewards. Wow. Like, oh. But yeah, I'm in there. Realistically, when you win a tier four or tier five, what do you guys, like, what's your expectation and what would you consider to be something that makes you happy? Um, if he starts... See, I would rather have a backup goalkeeper on like a halfway decent team than a 35, like a 35 merchant that starts every week, but he doesn't do anything. Like, give yeah. me the backup goalkeeper of, I don't know, uh, FC Twente or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it probably, if we look at it like that, yeah, backup goalkeeper, somebody who just starts, everyone else, trash. Ironically, the backup goalkeeper for FC20 is like 46 years old. But I, Well, <laughs> Jesus. I, because I have a super rare. <laughs> I like picked the worst player on the planet. Literally the one, yeah. What about like yeah. a 17-year-old kid that nobody knows anything about? You mean like Matai Akimboni from DC uh, United? I want some, some kid that plays for New England Revs, his super rare. Uh, he's like 17 years old. And it's like, I ooh, I have a new season – Part of this kid that's his, uh, I'll have to look up his name, but it's just like he's he's never gonna play ever. 
Uh, well, it's. I guess it's depending what what size gallery you've got, maybe as well, and why you play the game. I think that all yeah. comes into because for me, I need kind of all the money, all the ETH that I can possibly get to get these players that I want to get in. So if anybody doesn't fit that, I'm just going to get rid of them straight away. But if I had a bigger gallery, I might think, oh, well, he looks promising. He's starting to come off the bench a little bit. Let's just keep hold of him and see what so happens. So I, I, I'm going to poke at this a little bit. So where do you draw the line, though? Like, okay, you won the 17-year-old guy, and uh, nobody knows anything about him. He may go to zero. Um, he could pop off and be worth 100 bucks next year. But he's worth $1.50 right now to Baselbot. Is it worth is it worth it to you right now to sell him for a dollar fifty to Baselbot or do you hold him? I would, yeah, I definitely wouldn't list him. But then if I was trying to do a, a trade with a bot and I was literally that tiny bit short, I would just probably just throw him in and just get on with it. Mm. And if it but, comes, I'm just playing for the for the now at the moment, really trying to win as much as I can to either sell for profit, like big bigger money, and if not, they literally mean nothing to me. <laughs> I mean, there, there is a line, though, at some point where you're yeah. just like, it's just not worth it for me to list that yeah. card. Yeah. And you get presented with, like, you really have to think about it once when you win that tier four or five, when you're just like, do I want a $3 rare? And yeah. you're like, yes, I do. <laughs> I will keep it. I won Caden Clark super rare last week. Yeah. Tier five. I mean, I, he's so worth great. Doing. What the hell am I going to do with that card? You keep them is what you do. Yeah. For literally forever. I'll never use Maybe. that. <laughs> I mean, at one at, at one point there was like, go oh, Caden Clark. He's going to he went to like Red Bulls. Solberg, right? Game. Or one of them, yeah. Yeah. Like there was promise there. So like he should be a guy that can do something in the MLS, right? Well, he's in the MLS and he's not doing anything right now. Yeah. He's, he's actually he, I was gonna say he's started three straight games, Andy. And is maxed out at 34.1 points. How how old is Caden Clark? 20. Okay, he's still young. Yeah. He'll be he's 21 been... in May. Yeah. But I don't think I'm ever using this card. Hold on. I'm going to show you how happy he is on the card to join the gallery. There he is. He's like, that's that's the expression of somebody that's back in the MLS. I just, <laughs> just about, I can't believe I'm back here. <laughs> in Minnesota. Well, he's he's playing for a team that's flying, though, at the moment. At least that. True. Don't know how long it'll last, but. Yeah. Let me do it's, you know what's funny is how good Minnesota is when they don't have Reynoso. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would love to see their record when Reynoso plays and when he doesn't play. Yeah. Like, last year yeah. they started off undefeated after, like, 12 games or something, and then Reynoso joins them and they go on a losing streak while Reynoso rips off 100s and so rare. Hmm. And that's where, like, we're all sitting there. Who cares if you win? Right. Get, get him back yeah. on the field, please. Yeah. Right. Apparently, he's a doubt for this, even though in play sharp and things like that, that he's um, 80% he a, percent start. I don't think he has a green card yet. Ah, oh, that's, yeah. Okay. How do they keep messing this up? Or Visa or whatever it is that he's got to get. He doesn't have it, yeah. I mean, what does he do uh, every preseason or offseason? He just um, just goes wild. He just goes AWOL. You don't even turn up sometimes for for the first training session. So the first year, the first year he pistol whipped a kid. Um, the second allegedly, year, allegedly, the second year it was girlfriend problems. I think, um, as in wife had issues with his girlfriend. With uh, that wasn't the same. That wasn't both just last year. Maybe it was. No, now that now that I've said that, maybe you're right. And then this year she didn't want him to come back to the U.S. Right. Right. Yeah. Big, bigger than Emil Forsberg, who actually, you know, for actually telling his girlfriend he was coming to the U.S. Yeah, that yeah. that's like the the craziest thing I've ever <laughs> I've ever seen. In fact, I was at, I tried to get I tried to get you, you and Sean to talk about it because Sean was so convinced that like, oh, he's going to be it. yeah, he's going to be phenomenal in the MLS now because he doesn't have girl or he doesn't have 
problems from his wife or whatever. It's like the dude has the dude has like personal issues. Yeah. It doesn't seem good to have like distractions, like an angry wife in the background. Well, doesn't seem very distracted, actually. <laughs> Sounds like he just ran away from it. <laughs> what's um what's annoying as well is that that come out about I think 30 minutes after I bought him. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, brilliant. This is gonna turn out like um Bill Hander and Kevin Rodriguez all over again. To be fair, it could be really good or it could be really I was gonna bad. say it... mm. Do you think he starts this weekend? With all of that? No, I don't think that that affects his starting ability at all. Mm. Like, like, I'd argue he's got a hundred written all over him. <laughs> Captain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do they play? At Orlando? It's even further away from Germany. <laughs> Sorry, that was all poor taste, but whatever. Um, where was I? <laughs> Oh, Agent Cooper said, I think he was just waiting for the transition period to start on so rare. There we go. Um, so, Andy, you, you are you playing for cash? Is, are you prioritizing cash? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do with I that can, cash? Like, what's that? What are you going to do with that cash? Probably, I don't know, line my pockets, go to, go to, uh, Burlington Coke factory and buy something real nice. I don't know. Um, try to buy a unique goalkeeper. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, okay. I, I, so. You think I'm you can compete similar... with the uh, unique boys? What's that? You think you can compete with the, with the unique boys with Pranksy and. Is Pranksy playing contender? He's playing everything. Is he not? I don't think that he really plays contender too much. Uh, yeah, I can I can compete with most people probably in contender classic. Uh, but, you know, am I competing or am I competing is kind of where we're at. He's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, there's other like hefty uh, HAFTI. He's got an incredible MX uh, uh, setup. There's lots of galleries that are that are very good. Uh, Guzan, not contender though. Oh, contender, right? Yeah. Only only contender for me. I'm a contender boy when it comes to unique. So. Uh, okay. So yeah. are you are you prioritizing cash over cards? When I can, like MLS uh, is like somewhere that I kind of targeted that I know the league and I um, can afford it. I am. Um, dabbling a little bit in Premier League in season. Um, but then other regions, like I'm not going to play the German one, the La Liga one, even uh, champions I'm not going to touch. It's just a matter of like picking picking spots where – and then the spots that I am picking, I'm going hard in. Like if you look at the MLS in-season stuff that I bought, I went really hard because now I can play depth. Like I can play matchups. I've got lots of depth. I can do lots of different things. But – if I were to scatter this all out, like if I were to do in season an in season MLS team, an in season uh, contender team, and in in season uh, uh, champions team, like spreading that stuff out doesn't make sense because like if my goalkeeper has a bad matchup, now my team's just kind of dead. But if I have keep it all in one region, um, I can take look at my three goalkeepers, prioritize it, and make one really good lineup for w whatever my top division is. And then the rest can just kind of make themselves. Yeah. Did winning a second Ricky Pooch, Ricky Pooch, um, make you want to then do an, even another lineup? Yeah. Which also, so that thankfully is the answer. But my God, what a colossal mistake by So Rare to <laughs> give you two of these cards that you were willing to actually buy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I guess it, now you're it's a beautiful it. thing, isn't it? <laughs> It is wild. Just wild. <laughs> yeah. And I like when I wanted, I was like, hmm, should I sell this? No. <laughs> I'm just going to make a, a another good end season team. So I guess you're still spending. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Um, Nerd will allow it. Well, I'm not competing there. So yeah, go nuts. Go nuts. So 
Parrot, is the plan to play in season after you win a bunch with your Gil and Messi and all well, the other sexy cards? I already I see an in season. I already see an in season team for you. You already have one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, Fallsburg is going to be in season. Pencil is going to be in season for me. Lennon, they're three like really good cards. So, I mean, I've got Willis in season goalkeeper, which obviously there's question marks on him now about what's going to go on after his red card and whether he earns number one spot again. So, I might, I might, but if I win some in season cards, I'd, I'd like to say that I'm going to sell them and start maybe recouping some of the money that I've put in over the last couple of years maybe take some stuff out and actually do some real life stuff with it. But knowing what I'm like, I'll probably end up buying more or, or just diving in into in season and see what happens. Well, the, the reason I bring that up is because you, you do seem to have the best MLS cards. Mm. And so winning new ones and then selling them to buy just more of the same cards that you have, or I'd probably go in. Um, Premier League classic yeah hmm. um, again it's another league that I know the most yeah. about so um, that would be the plan I I'm not really interested in contenders even though that I love some of the cards in there like some of the Division 2 players um, like Paul Jolly or what, uh, I think it's that's there his yeah. name or Holly Jolly like he's insane as a scorer oh, sure, as a right. yeah that's it um, so I'd like some of those cards um, and may maybe eventually I'll pick them up, but I've, I've got to stay focused on kind of my strategy and it would be to win in-season cards, make the decision whether I want to play in-season challenges or not. And if I don't, then sell that and either take the money out or buy a Premier League Classic and play Premier League Classic. I feel like you should make that those decisions like now because you could sell Paintsel in-season for an old, a super old gank card and take the profit you could sell yeah. your um who else do you have joe willis or trade your joe willis or same with brooks Lennon. like you could you could take yeah. profit on all those cards and just get the old one yeah and i yeah i could do but i still want to play mls special weekly or whatever it's called for the next yeah. couple of weeks but then after that who knows maybe the value comes down because everyone's you know going going in on those ones yeah sure. that's true yeah, I mean, those cards definitely have a challenge. Challenge. Challengers cash will still be there, though, like in-season challengers yeah. for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's true. Or I just win everything, every lineup that I put out, I just win for the next two weeks and become the greatest solo player ever. Why Why only two weeks? <laughs> yeah, why not make it three, four, five in a row? Yeah. <laughs> That's usually the best strategy is just win. Yeah. I, I find that to be, like, really helpful. Yeah. 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 winning yeah and picking the guy who scores the most points as your captain week in and week mm -hmm. right. yeah like first place is probably like optimal <laughs> yeah hey Laird, you want you you want you want to know what didn't bother me the 50 percent captain bonus oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> no that bothered me i just don't, don't care like i just I, I don't care I care less every minute that it goes because I'm just like, I they're not going to change it. But I is think that for every competition now? So every captain across the game is fifty percent. Uh, in the in the new comps, yeah. Okay, they'll certainly never do it for cap two forty. No, no, oh, no, right. They'll raise yeah. they'll raise the threshold to a thousand points. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, guys. <laughs> I just think it's gimmicky almost like are they going to start adding oh use your coins to buy boots and put it on the player and get an extra 10 percent and that type of stuff because do you think that they're they're finished gamifying the game oh i love this question it's a great question um they better not do boots and wizard hats like do not need that on i don't need the sven coombs with a santa hat on like what about a uh, Petter Check helmet? Oh God, your yeah. goalkeeper has like plus nine intelligence now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that in my life, and don't need to like, like I'm, 
if you guys played Mega, do you, uh, the the crap they had on there where it was like, oh, this hat, you get plus four points on clearances. So you might want to put them on one of your center backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just too much. It, there's already so much to do. Yeah. We don't we don't need more chores. Yeah. Three months of fitness is going to come back. Fitness. Maybe. Fitness. I'm, I was sort of okay with fitness, but I'm also fine not having fitness. Fling Flong said tactics are good. I, I do like tactics. Tactics are good. I know people hate the idea of them invading the SO5 game. I guess let's see what happens when they do the uh, special weeklies with tactics, and maybe we love it. Maybe maybe we don't. But it's a nice little testing ground. Did they say they did they mention that? Yeah, they did, right? Yeah, they said in a special weekly they're gonna allow the use of uh, not allow but and make you use tactics in some way. Yeah, the concept of tactics for like an SO5 lineup that's not like a single game is interesting to me because, like, if you like you have an Atlas center back and you're like, yeah, let me get the park the bus. And then it's like, but nobody else on your team, you know, you want to actually get the point, real points. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if I want it all the time, but I mean, um, imagine a Nakaxa stack with park the bus and they get their right. 37 clearances uh, between your two defenders. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But we're not going to be able to stack anymore. They're getting rid of stacking. Oh God. Lazy. Boring. <laughs> or the most fun way to watch a game, but you know, it's yeah. almost like people have different, you know, preferences. It's Laird, yeah, I don't nuclear know what bomb went off. How about Sorry that? about that. It was working too long. And they were like, whoa, 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 we gotta screw this up a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I just left on the no stacking. I'm just that I'm out. The um hold on, what were we saying before that? Fitness. <clears throat> oh, gamifying it. Um I hope so. I think that it's like a really tough line because it's like we we came here to play a fantasy game, and a lot of the fantasy game, the reason why people like fantasy sports is that you're like you get the benefit of what people do in real life. And that's why I still always had kind of a problem with collections where it's like, if we have the same player, you might score 12 more points than me, even though we have the same. And I was okay with it with XP, but now, and now I think, do you think everyone is just going to have level 20 cards in like a year because all they're giving out is boosts with these stupid boxes? Yeah. I think, I think that it was, it's that said, you can only put what three on a player for now. Yeah. Well, if they change that, then then it's definitely a mistake. But yeah, I mean, I look at the players that I've just bought, and they should be technically the best scoring MLS cards that are there, right? So why should I sell them unless I want to bin off rares, move into another scarcity, move into another competition, or whatever? That like a big drastic change, I think. Um, they're just going to go to level 20. Right. And I'm just going to play them week in and week out in various competitions. And eventually people are going to do the same. So what, what's the differ, what's the word, the differentiator, if that's actually a word. And that's hence why are they going to carry on gamifying the game so that you can have an extra 1% here and a 1% there. Now they've got collections. Fitness obviously didn't work or wasn't received well. What's next? <laughs> steroids and uh um energy drinks uh you know your your guy can take a big swig of milk before the game week and you know maybe is is that actually where the sponsorship comes from we don't have sponsored tournaments but like all of a sudden they're like hey would you like to buy a carabao boost for your players yeah milk it does the body good (laughs) and it's like your guy's got the milk mustache only yeah, after you wizard hat, hat. wizard hats, but we get a milk monster. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, how many level twenty cards do you have? A lot, yeah. So do I. I, I yeah. have a ton. Do you, Do you think it should stop at twenty? 
Yeah. Yes. It, I mean, people like me already have it too good, right? That have been on the platform for five years. What I what I do like though is that they keep accumulating XP. So it's possible that you could, like, if you sold like a a card with fifty thousand XP, yeah, yeah, the buyer gets a level twenty card. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is good. Like I have a level twenty. My Rusnok Super Rare is level twenty, and I'm like, surely someone will pay more for this because it it'll be level like eighteen when they buy it. Yeah. Turns out they don't care. Mike said, "Just remove the hundred cap." Do you think that that's a possibility? I'm a hard no on the removing it because. And I think Sean was actually the one who brought this up. The reason why it's helpful is because it can be matched. And when you have somebody who scores like 140 and you don't have them, it's almost like you have no chance. 140 plus a 50% captain, it's like you have no chance if you don't have that card. And 100, like at least somebody else could score that and you'd be okay. It changes the game too much too because like uh, uh, we've already made, again, we've already made decisions on who we're buying and who's in our gallery and who, you know, all, all of those things. And, you know, those caps, removing a cap like that significantly changes the value of cards. Like yeah. er Erling Highland has like never scored 100 anyways, but like now why would you ever buy him versus some really elastic type of winger or something that can get a goal, like a Doku or something who can probably score 150 points if, right. you know. Yeah, everyone bringing up Nathan Ake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's a funny one. I forget. Did he have, it was a hundred, like 101 all around, right? Mike, I would rather them, like, instead of messing with the cap, why not just tweak the matrix? Make it harder to get to 100. Yeah. There's a few things that, that always get me. Um, a midfielder getting minus two for a goal conceded. That annoys me a little bit. Why does that bother you? I just need every point that I can get. Why does it bother you? <laughs> It's when you when you've got them as captain and things like that, and that it's that they're, they're nowhere near. The, I don't know. I don't know. Just get someone else. Yeah, like he's on the other side of the field, and somebody else yeah. fucked up, and yeah. Yeah. Shit. It'd be, it, I will say it. It would be fun if you had him in a lineup, and and you got 172 points for that. How about 230? Hmm. Oh, with your 50 percent captain bonus. Yeah. Literally, they would make cap two the threshold a thousand points. Um, anyway, what do you think about negative AA dropping a player with a decisive below sixty? It's literally the Erling Haaland rule. Yeah, I don't think it happens like that that often, and it probably doesn't affect them that much. Do you think that a sub should? go straight from 25 to 60 with a decisive oh man yeah didn't we talk about this do we not talk about this should goals just be worth something instead of like all like automatically like 25 right off the bat just seems i don't know mm. I was trying to explain this to somebody who was i even talking to yeah how do you explain the scoring matrix to someone so somebody who was it forget who it was, but they were like, a goal is worth 25. And I'm like, no, 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 just the first one. And they're like, well, they had a goal and an assist. So the assist is worth 10. Right. And I'm like, no, they're the, no, it's like the first one is 25. And then the next one is 10. And they were like, yeah, but what if the assist was first? I'm like, yeah, 25. And they were like, this so game makes the sense. Goal worth? And I'm like, it depends if it's the first decisive <laughs> action and, oh, but, and, but he had a uh, clearance off the line earlier. So actually the goal is only 10 this time. Like, uh, yeah, that, there might be a way to make it a little more. I, I think once you get it, you get it. But explaining it to someone can be cumbersome. Hmm. I think if you're not smart enough to figure it out, you should just go play something else. <laughs> FPO. <laughs> There's a certain level of intelligence needed to play this game, Andy. And so we mm -hmm. all obviously have it. Um, okay. So that's, that's why we're still here. 
Simple as that. Agent oh. Cooper said, I think they might introduce seven aside SO5 game in the future. One goalie, two defenders, two midfielders, two forwards. Why do you think that? Just you, you think that because. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. They, it would be interesting doing a, like a little special every now and again with it, like a seven aside or an eight aside, just to see what happens. But yeah, as an actual game mode, I, I don't think that I would ever do that. So they haven't played around with the roster size, but they played around with the basically with the scoring matrix in NBA, right. where it would be the equivalent of hey, this week, uh, a Clearances are worth three points instead of one. Or, um, or attempted, oh, that's what it, that would be like. Attempted assists are now worth 10 instead of whatever the hell they're worth now. Do you want that? Not as a, I mean, it would be like a special weekly, but literally like f targeting specific stats that they were like, you get more for these now. No. I think people will immediately go to so rare data. They'll go to the stats page. They'll look at attempted assists. Who's got the most? Th then all of a sudden they're going to shoot up in price, and you're effectively manipulating the market. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it's kind of okay, but also like I I don't really want to I I really wouldn't want to get too involved with that because a the price differences. But then also too, like there's going to be people that, um, well, not only not only that, the sample size is one week, so it's still going to be quite random. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, fullbacks are going to get a lot of attempted assists, but that doesn't mean Brooks Lennon's going to get a lot this week. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And also, just remember that so rare don't affect the market. Of course not. Of course not. It's true. It's true. Um, Agent Cooper's response to why he wants SO7 is because he's a Maverick. The competition yeah. be, could be called the Magnificent 7 Special. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in now. Johnny said they need to stop complicating the game. Like, yes. Like don't 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 ruin don't ruin this, right? So on that, about this game week, when they announced all the changes, we were like, yeah, it's gonna be so much easier. And here we are. Because it's change, Re regardless of whether it's easy or hard or whatever. When you institute change, no matter what, it's it's hard at first. And yet, when we saw the changes, we were like, that's easier. And now we sit down to do it and we're like, fuck, we were wrong. <laughs> were, and then I think in two weeks, we'll be like, wow. Um, like, Sean, Sean was bitching the other day about how there's going to be no... Um, really, Sean? What? <laughs> But how there's like going to be no decisions because like, yeah. um, and and my point in in arguing with him is now you get to make decisions on, not on where you're playing. Like, am I playing this guy in rare pro or am I playing him in gas? Am I playing here? Or there? Now you're making decisions on how to make the best lineup, which I think is what the core of a fantasy game should be. Like, what is my best lineup? Who has the best matchups? Those should be the decisions that a manager makes, not. Am I playing rare pro this week or am I playing champions or like you're taking that part out of the equation and now you're making best lineups. Is that that different? Yeah. Like, didn't we always want to make our best lineups and put them in? No. Oh, okay. I think you wanted to play. No wonder I've, been, I've been playing this game wrong this whole time. <laughs> I think no, you were a lot of it was targeting the right regions and the right uh, divisions and and am I going to use this super rare and and rare pro or in my super rare team or am I going to use him in capped mode? Like there were, it was more about where you're putting it, not making the best lineup. Do you think it forces people? Do you think that it forces people to want to go upwards in terms of scarcity, so from rare to super rare, etc. Because you're only going to be playing one competition. So, for example, my gallery is, is whole challenges. Before it wasn't, it would have been contenders, a few super S here, maybe a little bit in champions, etc. Now I've gone to challenges. I've already made up my mind that I don't really want to play contenders at any level. 
So where's next? Yeah, it might be Premier League. But if I wanted to stay in challenges, the next position for that is super rare. So do you think it forces people to look at... It's, look at it's so hard to do now. You need 20 cards. You need 20 super rares to go. Maybe not yeah. 20, but you need probably 10. You probably need two lineups. If I would say if you want to compete anywhere, you need two lineups so that you can play yeah. your best matchups. Yeah, and I suppose the progression between classic and then going to in-season in the same competition is... I don't know whether it's progression, but to play more lineups in that competition, yeah. Yeah. And and honestly, that's Sower's problem that they need to deal with and and whether they care that you, and you're a perfect example of this, do they care whether you progress to SRs or mm. just stay in rare? Yeah. And so I think um, progression – Progression's always been kind of a myth. Yeah. And this new structure kind of just exposes that, which I think is fine. I think the progression that they see now is just division wise, get all of your lineups in division one. But I do think it's more reasonable to expect progression to be uh, classic to in season. And so, like, once you have the best classic lineup, three best classics, and the three best in season, now you're winning so much money, you go buy some super rares. Or you go to another region, like you progress horizontally, I guess. Yeah. Like I don't I, I appreciate everybody's like, no, 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 you need people to like want to move up in scarcities, but they've always needed it and they don't, it's never really been part of the game. It's just like, oh, I'm ready to spend more now. And that's the I think they've just basically said that progression is pro, progression within the game doesn't exist anymore. If you want to progress, you need to pay. But I, I don't think I don't think the actual progression is any different. Maybe they're just recognizing it more. Yeah, yeah. Like and, I was saying progression or expansion. Like I'm yeah. not sure that's any different. It's out outward versus upward right because you right. can you can progress outward easily still if you want to go play out into in season or into a new region that's easy but for parrot to want to go progress upward into sr that's not easy right that's yeah. spending that's probably what, taking whatever your gal gallery value is and spending that again to get into srs yeah yeah but I'm not sure that's I'm not sure that's bad. Like I think that the the people who move up are those who who look at this game and they're like, "Oh, I have the money." And yes, right. I am willing to go buy those. Right. And I can I can be successful at that level. I don't think it's a a constant like work my way up. I think you work your way up after you've literally maxed out what you can at a scarcity and mm -hmm realistically that takes so long that like i think the progression i don't think it has to be, it doesn't have to be that way though like no, no, it doesn't have to be no no no, not at all yeah. but i think what in so rare's case knowing how big of a jump it is for someone like parrot to go from rare to competing in rare to competing in super rare what they want is oh your <laughs> i was gonna use brooks lennon brooks lennon transfers to the premier league now you have a Premier League card. Go buy some more Premier League cards, and you just kind of go out that way, as opposed to I think like, like I think literally the progression is out and then up within the divisions. And by the time you max out, like theoretically, you're successful enough that maybe you should buy some super rares. Hmm. Laird, Laird, you just exposed something that's that's great. Brooks Lennon is never going to the Premier League, so everyone should buy a Brooks. Lennon <laughs> I looked down and I saw his picture, and I'm like, nope, not bad example, but that's all I got right now. He, I mean, he's not going to Europe at all, and he's good in the MLS. So good. And if good anybody program. wants his super rare, he's on sale. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. How old he's is Brooks Lennon? Is he really never twenty seven? All right, twenty six. Yeah. He's not good enough for, for Europe, I don't think. Like nowhere in Europe? There are some, I mean, there are some really shitty leagues in Europe, all right? Yeah. I'm not naming anyone, not saying they're <laughs> SO5 covered, just saying. <laughs> mm. 
takes one little paid tweet from Fabrizio Romano. There's like a <laughs> you're interested in Brooks Lennon. There's like a yeah. league that's like I think it's like I don't know is it Scotland. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Agent Cooper said, if so rare becomes mega, which I don't think it's going to. Sorry, Para, to make put this over your face there. I wonder if we could see super and unique competitions being sponsored by big companies, almost like high rollers and poker with huge stakes and prize money for the winner. I just never see it happening. They just need so many more users for it to matter. This, this week's uh, tournament brought to you by Ridge Wallet. <laughs> Certainly not this stream. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who are the Ridge Wallet competitors so we can go after them? Maybe There's lots right. of Chinese Chinese knockoffs. <sighs> Apparently that's where Brooks Lennon's going. Maybe he can get me one. <laughs> oh, let him be China. <laughs> well, I mean, he could be all right there. Did did you see that Michael uh in in Gadju, however you pronounce his name, that used to play for Gimp? His first three games this year in China are like 195, 87 or something like that. But when he went there, he really struggled, didn't he? He did at first, yeah. Mm. Didn't he didn't he smash in like his first game though? Probably. Did I make that up? But he did have a period there where it was like I never knew if I up. wanted to use him or not. I think you should use it. I'm gonna play him in a good lineup this week and he'll probably score like forty seven points. Oh, they're against Wuhan three towns. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Get that Wuhan flu. Away to three towns. Oof. Do they have any players? They used to have Anderson Lopez. He was at Wuhan three towns? Yeah. He played there for like one year. Really? Maybe, maybe it was like half a year. He's was pretty that, good there too, I think. Um, was that after... It was between, yeah, it was between, between? Uh, Wuhan FC. Come on. Oh, those are different. Come on. <laughs> They're different. Jeez. There's two teams in Wuhan. Jeez. <laughs> it's like confusing Manchester United and Manchester City. Sheesh. <laughs> Can't believe there was two, there's two teams in that town. There's two, two teams in that town, but, but one blue. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you started talking, I was like, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> uh, Agent Cooper said, Sawyer just need to sponsor the World Cup. Or the Prem. Yeah, and be like a global club. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Two hand, three I times. like that. Oh, man. <laughs> I've got a question for you guys. Please save I us for this. <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday. Are you addicted to so rare? Uh, yeah. So I like I definitely am, but I also feel like I'm in a weird spot because it's literally my job. Like I don't I don't play so rare as my job. Like my shit winnings are not paying my bills, thankfully, but it, it consumes way too much. Well, I don't know if it's way too much, but it consumes like a ton of my headspace all the time. Yeah. I was thinking because obviously the transition was announced, et cetera. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about what to do, selling cards, just talking to people on discord, buying cards, who should I buy? What? Like it's just been in my head for literally the last few weeks. And I sat there yesterday and I thought, shit, I've spent a lot of time thinking, talking, doing so rare. Am I addicted? Probably. The real question is, is that okay? No, <laughs> no, it's all right. <laughs> is that okay? Because I mean, people are addicted like, to golf. What people are would be the negative? What's that? What's the negative? Well, to I mean, with how close it is to like Laird dies again. I'll <laughs> I'll wait before I respond to his question. Wait. 
Almost back. Almost back. Sorry. I would say, Laird, I would say the financial like pieces of it and the how close you might associate it with like gambling would be why I would say that there are definitely negative aspects to being addicted to it. I think that you can, you know, that there, there's like the, uh, of course, like the, the hobby aspects, like I enjoy a hobby. I enjoy golf. Uh, I'm addicted to golf. Mm-hmm. I pay money to play golf. I think you can do it in a healthy way. I feel like I'm there. Like I think about it nonstop. I watch games on the weekend. I'm, but I think that, you know, like I still uh, have a relationship with my family and uh, I'm making uh, okay financial decisions. I'm not in putting, you know, maxing out credit cards and putting it on the platform. So like there's a way to maintain that addiction in a healthy manner. And then there's mm-hmm. ways to not maintain that addiction in a healthy manner. And I think that you have to weigh those two things. And I, I, I mean, if you, I would say if you're seeing, if you really feel like it's getting out of control and you're going too far, then, you know, maybe you have to just peel back and sell pieces or spend less time thinking about it. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, spawn. Do you, so when you when you asked yourself that question, parent, mm-hmm. like, were you, was there, was there a consideration that that was okay? Oh yeah, like I'm not going to be on my means. I'm fully. That, but that, that's not what I meant, though. But like, was there any way that you were going to admit that yes, you were addicted to so rare without it be, feeling negative? No. No. I think it was just me thinking. I've spent a lot of time the last couple of weeks, but mm-hmm. to your question, yeah, I, th- I think it's fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> Three degenerate gamblers all, you know, huddled <laughs> up together, <laughs> around each other. We're okay, it's guys. Good. We're doing all right. yeah, high five. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think the ty- I, I, I used to watch a lot of FPL content like five, six years ago, and they done a, an episode that was kind of always stuck with me. Is that sometimes they would not. Um, purposely like turn their phone off all day so that they could watch match of the day and see all of the result results, all the goals for fun. And I think that when one of them said that I had my phone and notifications on, and then I was getting annoyed that my players wasn't scoring well and it was ruined oh, and it was ruining this weekend. And I was just like, shit, that's, that's a bit too much. I think that if I'm playing so rare and it's ruining my weekend, I will stop playing. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely get like frustrated with my family when my players yeah. aren't doing well. You know, I, I yell at them and uh... yeah, yeah, like <laughs> throw water over them and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yell at my kids just for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> just Hortcamp didn't score. I'm yeah. dad's pissed today. Yeah. <laughs> I can miss a damn penalty. <laughs> what do you mean? What's wrong? <laughs> No, to be honest, that's a reason. That's like a huge reason why I stopped playing DFS is because my losing at DFS was not nearly as like the level of disappointment didn't match the level of I was never even happy when I won. It was just like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. I can keep playing, and I don't feel that way. It's so rare, which is why I don't like necessarily equate them to be the I same. I mean, the beauty is, is you don't you don't lose your stuff. You don't uh, like okay. Uh, one tell that to my gallery week. value, Andy. Come on now. <laughs> on to the next week, right? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a great line here. This is this should have been the title of the show. A Trinity of Enable. <laughs> See what a bonsai tree does to us. Yeah. <laughs> it is really funny. Uh Zyler said maybe we're just addicted to football. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Possible. I don't even watch football, so I don't Ooh. think I can pull that one off. Chani said, I wonder if our levels of disappointment go up massively now that midweeks aren't going to be the same. So going from one game week to the next big one isn't the same anymore. Uh, I think midweeks are going to be fine. Hmm. I don't know. I do also wonder about this. Agent Cooper said the quick turnover of game weeks is the best thing about Sora over FPL. There's always a game week coming up. In a few days, I wonder if so would ever divide the game week into three game weeks. Oh, certainly not. No that's way. interesting. Um, 
I don't think they're looking for ways to pay out more rewards. <laughs> I think the problem there is just not there's not enough like uh, cohesiveness. Like, mm-hmm. Teams in the same regions that play over the course of three days. I don't think I could handle three yeah. three deadlines in a week. <laughs> three deadlines. Yeah. I guess I already do that with basketball and baseball. Although I miss basketball all the time anyway. Um, Andy, do you have to go back to work? I feel bad. I, I just I lost track of time here. Oh, you know it's the the Thursday afternoon before a holiday. We we can go the rest of the day. We're good. Good Um, Friday. Let's go. Yeah. Halogen said, I'm not setting lineups three times a week. Parrot, I didn't even ask you. I did. You have anywhere to go? Kids bedtime. Uh, You have the MLB deadline coming up here shortly. Oh, your baseball lineups. Andy, that's like 30, 25 minutes. Yeah. You got to, you got to set your lineups, man. Oh, I got to do training. Oh, I don't do training. I'll do baseball training. The nut low of so rare. MLB lineup trainer or training lineups. <laughs> uh, all right, Perry, you got anything else before you uh, before we head off? No, I'm good. I'm good. You Being sure you don't want to? You sure you don't want to hit us with any other existential questions about you know us and our relationship with the so rare um, platform? Are you two actually friends, or is it all for content? Ooh, that's a great <laughs> question. That, that is good. I think if we met each other in real life, we would hate each other, you know? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> We've literally hung out together in real life. <laughs> and he's actually still upset about the first time that we met. True. So there was a video of this. Nellis posted it. We all met. A bunch of us met in Orlando. Andy, I was looking back. That was like an epic group of people. It was. It was. Like it was us two, Sean, Maxime, Nashi, Harry Trades, um, John Nellis. Trippin B, John Nellis. So Nellis took a video of, so I, my flight got in late and I came to meet everyone at the bar and everyone was absolutely shit canned, highlighted by Andy Black over here. And I'm walking in the, uh, yeah, exactly. That <laughs> thumbs up bubble. So Andy, I get, I walk up to the bar and Andy's in the window, like banging it going, yeah. So I walk in and there's this like, um, there's like a barrier for, for like a ramp and he's on the other side. So I'm like walking around the barrier to get to Andy and Trip and B shows up and I've known Trip and B for 15 years, maybe 10, 15 years. Only on the internet. I'd never met him before. So I saw him and I gave Trip and B this huge hug, even though everybody was expecting me to go right to Andy. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, hey, Andy, what's up? And then walked over. You know I what I felt, like, I, I, I felt like that classic scene in a movie when the guy and the girl are like running towards each other for the hug and the girl and passes, runs by. The girl passes the guy up and she embraces someone else. Like that's that was what happened to me. So. <laughs> That's literally what happened. Yeah, it is literally <laughs> what happened. I'm going to have to find that video. I think I'm pretty sure it's on Twitter somewhere. Shout out to John Nellis for taking that video before before he was John Nellis. Yeah, before he was famous. Yeah. Like, Back when he was just John Nellis, John so rare or whatever. Yeah. Now I can't even talk to him. Can't even get the guy on the phone. Anyway. Do you, do you think John turns into like... Is, is he going to be like a big um, celebrity star someday? Like, is he going to be like a, a... He's already there, man. No, no, no. no. Like, is he going to be like, you know, like these people that are always on like reality TV shows? Is, he, is this going to be like, is that going to be John's persona? He's like the, the Boston Rob from Survivor is John now. Um, I don't see him saying like no to those opportunities. Yeah. I think we should we should get John Nellis on Survivor next season. I mean, it needs to happen, or just whatever other reality show. I don't care. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, Survivor's a whatever. Everybody knows what that is. You know yeah. what show he is perfect for? The Amazing the, Race. The amazing, yeah, The Amazing Race. That's right. It's true. Maybe Love Is Blind. Agent Cooper said. Oh. 
at this rate, he'll be the next prime minister of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny said John would have to take Alex with him to survive. <laughs> um, so yeah, as Agent Cooper said, we've lost the plot. Uh, so thank you to everybody for coming. Everyone's still here. So thank you, everybody. If you could please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm guessing there are many more people watching right now. I see 135. How many likes we have? Hold on. 37? I think I should be ashamed. What are we doing here? Anyway, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, that's right. Mike Basson, there was a plot. of. Uh, see, this is what the show is all about. So thank you, everybody. Parrot, thank you for coming on. Good luck dominating challengers now with your MLS goats. And um, yeah, good luck this weekend. <laughs>